writers, agents, and publishers, for the first time since the Gutenberg Press, find themselves lost in a maze of mystery as technology alters the shape of the publishing industry. Searching for Answers is a group of writers throwing pop culture, writing, and publishing into a crucible of clarity, passion, and humor. This group is the Right Pack. Welcome back to Right Pack Radio. This is your host, David Allen Lucas, author of science fiction and crime drama. And we're recording in front of a live audience at Writers in the Park this year. Hey. This is the sixth annual Writers in the Park, a free writers conference in St. Louis. And with me today, of course, I can't go anywhere without my great co-host. Hi, I'm Kathleen Kayembe. I write paranormal romance under the pen name Kaseka and Vita, and I like weird things. I'm Melanie Planey. I write uh, science fiction, fantasy, and nonfiction. Hi, I'm Peter Green. Uh, I write uh, Patrick McKenna Mysteries and World War II Biography. My name is Jennifer Stolzer. I'm a children's book author and illustrator. And if you hear any banging, it appears we have a poltergeist in the room. Just ignore them. <laughs> um, I'm Meredith Tate. I write speculative YA and new adult, including the book Missing Pieces, which is out now. Fedora Amos. I write Victorian whodunits like Jack the Ripper in St. Louis. I have a new book coming out in February called Mayhem at Buffalo Bill's Wild West. And I'm president of Greater St. Louis Sisters in Crime. I want to say one more thing. In today's paper, catch the review by Harry, what's his name? Harry Levins. Harry Levins for Peter's new book. Oh, Yay. excellent. Yay. Yeah. The, date of recording the, the date of recording is... August the 29th. So August the 29th. In the park. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Fatal Designs, a second Patrick McKenna mystery. But thank you. Excellent. Fedora. Right. And our other member who is not currently in the room, but maybe popping in and out, of course, <laughs> is the esteemed Brad R. Cook. What you didn't see was everyone at the table looking at the door in case he was going to walk in. <laughs> <laughs> it would be perfect timing. Okay. Author of Steampunk, most certain, most right eyes got... Iron Horseman, and coming out soon is Iron Zulu. Yes. Okay, today's topic, we're going to talk about writing communities. Why are they important? How to connect up with them? What to avoid? And should write, And what kind of communities are out there? You've got two presidents of two writing communities, and we're constantly together, mm -hmm. as Fedora and myself. So... Why be, a, let's talk about first off, why be part of any type of writing community? Why be? Support. Support. Friends. Friends. Uh, craft, knowledge. Mm -hmm. They're making sure you stay writing. Um, when I said support, I meant support for all sorts of different things. Inspiration. Mm -hmm. yes. How about we open up to our live studio audience? Studio audience members, why did you, what brought you out to Writers in the Park today? Boy, talk about tossing them right on. The, sure, yeah, the why not? If, if, if they want to talk. That, go ahead. I uh, I had written a novel about 15 or 20 years ago, which sat in my computer for about 10 years or so until I got associated with the Writers Guild. That gave me the impetus to actually finish it. And it was published about a year and a half ago. Hey. And that was Glenn Hattori. Glenn Sartori. That's Glenn Sartori. What's the name of your book? The name of the book is Epiphany. Excellent. Oh, good. Okay. So the Writers Guild and being part of a writing community then got you to finish a work that you had started that you seemed to, to care a lot about, but it, couldn't get the uh, momentum to finish yourself. That's exactly correct. And yeah. then it took you through the publishing process, I'm guessing? Yes. Yeah, so I, I self-published. I, I mm -hmm. hired a person to do the cover mm -hmm. and the internal design. And then uh, she had a published, small publishing company in New Hampshire, Princeton Pauper Press. Okay. And then she published it through that. So did you get did you help get help finding that through the Writers Guild too, or the community that you had established? I helped, what what I, what happened was I uh, Peter Green introduced me to Cindy Davis, who is a uh, editor, and then my she edited my book, and through Cindy Davis, uh, she connected up me with uh, Jennifer Carson in New Hampshire, who actually did the cover, the layout interior layout, and then uh, published. Oh. All through Peter Green and Cindy Davis. I wondered how that had happened. This That's is Peter. Me. That's exactly <laughs> <what I'm saying. laughs> Thank you, Peter. 
Well, I'm going to throw out a great big philosophical statement. Writers are lonely. We need people who have some degree of understanding of what we're up against and what we do. For example, <laughs> what do regular people ask me all the time, which really gets my goal, let me tell you. How are your books doing? Are you selling a lot of books? Well, hey, that's about the last thing I want to talk about to anybody. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm doing well or doing not, you don't ask other people how much money they make, do you? I'll always but writers, it's just fine if you do. Apparently, at any rate, what I'm suggesting is that other writers understand what you're up against. Mm -hmm. Right. They yes. have the same soulful passion as you do, and nobody else is going to get it. Before I let the next two people go, real quick, I want to talk about something which a lot of people outside of St. Louis don't realize. St. Louis actually has a huge, as in almost dwarfing other communities, huge war writing community. No, it doesn't just almost, it actually does. There Thank was you. an online <laughs> Go for it, correct it, go for it. Bring out those St. Louis is the number one place in the country to be a writer. Right. Hello. Thank you, St. Louis. I have a hard time believing it beats Boston. Yeah, it does. It does, at least according to this poll. Oh. And I can't remember. It just Right was the name of the group online that did that. I was going to make two points about, about writing communities. One is that I'm, I'm someone who last year I made the jump to writing full time. So that is um, that is my job now is writing. Yay. And Yay. that's the dream. But yeah, <laughs> pretty is. much what my day entails now is I wake up, I go to the gym, I come home, and I'm in my house and I write. And I love it. It's my favorite, but it gets a little lonely because I am with myself all day. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, if I sometimes I can go and text Jen and say, do you want to go to the coffee shop and get some writing done? And we'll go do that. Or um, at night I'll meet, Thursday nights, we meet at Caldy's Coffee Shop. And um, it's good to just have that connection and just kind of, because writing is a solitary activity. It's not something that you're collaborating with other people on. I mean, you, you are sometimes, but in general, it's a solitary activity. So it helps to kind of get rid of some of the loneliness. Um, I was just thinking, I was reading a Yahoo article, and the article was more or less a book review. I don't know if it was actually a book review or not about a writer. And some of the comments were criticizing the author for exploiting whatever the issue was and you know making money off of it the writer actually got on in the comments it's like i didn't make much money off of this book i just non-writers don't understand it's like i guess some people think this is true of actors too mm -hmm. that oh, all actors are rich well most actors don't make much money at all most writers even successful writers right. don't actually make enough money to actually live on just their writing <laughs> And there's a whole lot of pain involved, a whole lot of rejection in both of those careers. And in visual artists as well, I'm sure you'll tell us the same oh, thing. Certainly, Jenna. yes. <laughs> so that any of these artistic endeavors are not only lonely, they also make you develop a very thick skin because you get plenty of rejection. I'd like to uh, turn it from the negative reasons that we used to have <laughs> writing communities to the positive. No, because we're all miserable. Negative. That's no. why we band no. together. Actually, no. actually no. Yes, I'm bad. glad you are because I guess I'm going to dovetail into that. Yeah. Writing is such a joyful thing for me when I'm sitting down and writing and I can manage to lose myself and lose hours of time. That is the best thing. I look up and I've done something wonderful. And I love talking to people about that sort of thing. I love being around writers because they inspire me, their points of view are different, and they see the world in a way that is unique. And because they're writing and they're using language all the time, they can describe the uniqueness of their way of seeing the world in a way that just is completely amazing. So one of the reasons I love writing communities and being around writers is I get to talk shop and I get to feel amazing being around creative people. So, yeah, these things are amazing reasons to be in a writing community. Yeah, the, similar to what you just said, uh, a thing I was going to say about enjoying being in a writing community, I didn't realize before hanging out with so many writers that I enjoy helping people put their stories together. I really enjoy workshopping stories and looking at a problem and being able to supply an outsider's perspective and sometimes that ends up solving whoever's writer's black problem that they might have. Sometimes it doesn't but uh, being able to speak 
with that jargon and uh, and just sort of think out and talk out all the different options in a story and treat a universe as if it's a real thing. Mm-hmm. That's so much fun. And when I was writing by myself uh, in notebooks in between classes in high school, I was the only one there, and I would get stuck on something and abandon it, as opposed to open it up and then find someone else who is also writing, who's also encountered the same problems with you know with being frustrated and writer's block. It's like, oh, this thing happened, and I don't know about how... Uh, this character is supposed to get out of it, and then the person I'm, who's listening to me, who has the same interest, who is used to being engaged in an, a world that's inside their brain, uh, they can say, oh, well, did they consider this? Did you consider doing that? Perhaps you have this taking place in the wrong part of the book or in the wrong part of the set or whatever. Uh, and I tried to do this with my mother. You know, bring my, it's like, Mom, I'm having trouble with my book I'm writing, and she says, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. I just want to, before I let Peter, Peter's going to go next, but before I do that, I want to say Right Pack itself, mm-hmm. which creates a radio, great radio program, got created by a certain co-host here. Um, <laughs> we started off as Kathleen a write-in. innocently. <laughs> and we just took it from there, but that is how we got started. It is literally a small writer's community getting together and bouncing off ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to add weight to what Jennifer just said, that uh, when I had the idea to write uh, my first book, which was a World War II biography involving my dad, who was quite a character, uh, I I was writing along and feeling all these things about loneliness. Uh, You'll have to forgive the ghosts of the building. They're, They're wanting to speak, but they are not too uh, verbal. If anyone in the audience could decipher the Morse code, <laughs> please t- leave it in our Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Keep going. while I wanted to write this book and I was obviously doing it, uh, somehow I heard about uh, uh, um, St. Louis Writers Guild and I signed up for the newsletter, which, by the way, I highly recommend. Uh, and And all of a sudden I started getting these uh, wonderful monthly meeting notices, and at the bottom of every notice was, "You have friends here." <laughs> and uh, I, you know, I knew how to uh, perhaps write uh, some of the book. I didn't know how to finish it. I didn't know what to do next. I didn't know how to uh, get it edited or uh, even think about publishing. But through friends and uh, their experiences, and we have everything from. Uh, beginning writers and even wannabe writers, all the way through famous published authors that are current members uh, of our some uh, 250 or so members uh-huh. uh, that, uh, uh, that can help and did help and saw me all the way through to publication of four books. I don't know if my comment's kind of pretty much been said, but all I was thinking was along the lines of... Um, how writers understand kind of the culture and the jargon and an example would be when I'm writing a query letter my husband is incredibly smart incredibly successful he'll read my query letter he'll be like oh you have a typo here whereas if I send it to someone in the writing community they'll say like oh well this arc doesn't make sense and there's not enough stakes here and you need to say this here and it's just an, an understanding the field that you're in and understanding just having that connection with people it's just like like with any job, no one's going to understand it like better than the people who are in it. Hi, I'm Amy Zlatic. I'm a relatively new member of the St. Louis Writers Guild. I've been in for about a year, so I have a perspective that's maybe a little different from those of you veterans that are in. Um, but for me, what the Writers Guild offers beyond the companionship and the, you know, the, the feeling that I do have friends here, that everybody knows what I'm going through, is uh, the programming that the Guild provides. I went to a, my first workshop here and it was for crime writers. I'm not a crime writer, but just the human nature that I picked up from that two hour talk was fascinating. And I know I will use that somewhere in my writing. So, you know, getting little insights into different genres is really, really helpful to me as a writer. I am so glad. You couldn't have done that better if I had paid you to do that. <laughs> you literally have dovetailed into where I was going to go next. There are no matter where you go, I don't care, St. Louis, New York, Los Angeles, wherever you think a writer's community should be, around Washington, 
There's a great one, uh, Pacific North, North. I'm uh, sorry, yes, Yale Washington. Pacific mm -hmm. Northwest Writers Association is out there. You've got two types of writing communities. You've got two types of writing groups that fall into this. You've got St. Louis Writers Guild and stuff like ours, which were dynamic. We're out there. We try to get you to publish. We're trying to get you through the steps, and I know Sisters in Crime is the same yeah. way. Um, you have other ones out there. It's like, okay, let's have coffee, tea, and tea and biscuits, and let's just talk about our day, and that's all we're going to do, and we're not going to actually go into explore the other areas. My question is to the listener. Wherever you're at in your writing community, and in your writing career, you have to know what you want. What do you want out of the community? And that's where you go tag into it. And sometimes you got to search. I was searching for St. Louis Writers Guild for decades. Hmm. Didn't know they existed. Finally joined them. Now I'm president. God help us. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but after eight, but yeah, it was just like suddenly word of mouth from another writer. Hey, go check this out. And it's, and that's where we end up at. Go ahead. Uh, um, well, in my third grade class, um, when I was really feeling bad because I was stuck on this one part for my book, well, the, my friends. Uh, help me persevere and help me finish the book. Excellent. That's awesome. What's state your name? Michael. Thanks, Michael. That was great. And what was your book about? Uh, wizards. Oh, great. Wizards. <laughs> Terrific. Yeah. What grade are you in awesome. now, Michael? Four. Four. All right. That's cool. You got writing friends at school. How many of us started, uh, of us adults, how many of us started at least about that age? Give or take. We can't see the hands up. You can't see the hands up, but <laughs> uh, all the writers in the group, One, I would two, say three, we've four, got five, ninety six, plus seven, percent. Eight, nine, nine people raise their hands. Yes. Mm -hmm. So a little bit less than ninety yeah. percent because there's yeah. more than two people. Here. Well, but close enough. Quite a few people. Oh, my first story that oh. I wrote was in first grade. It was a crossover fanfic between Star Trek: The Next Generation. And the troll dolls <laughs> were all the rage. Where is this thing? Tell me you still have it. Oh my goodness. I published it in my first grade class. I don't know where it is now, unfortunately. Oh, cool. But let's just say Deanna Troy saved the day and the rainbow troll was evil. <laughs> <laughs> we, all, we all get started doing things That's that we amazing. love. And fan fiction, just so you know, is an amazing way to yeah, learn. No, no hate for fan fiction. Mm -hmm. My first book I ever made was a picture book. No words. Words. It was about Transformers falling down a hole. Nice. <laughs> it was uh, the I found a tool on my computer that created a ray, a spirograph kind of thing. So I picked the new color, and they fell through all the colors of the rainbow <laughs> until they landed on the ground, and then there was a door, and they got to leave. Oh! <laughs> and that was my wow. first book I ever made. <laughs> How visual. <laughs> There was a Spider-Man game, to, uh, not game, I felt like it was a game, but basically you could make your own comic books for Spider-Man on my computer. Mm. My brother would set everything on fire, but I would try and set it up so that all the action happened because it would, it would put all the characters and all the things you did on the screen in the order that you did it. So I was like, okay, so the woman has to walk on the screen first. And then the goblin has to come in, and then the fire from the goblin's hand has to come in, and then I have to change the page. Uh -huh. Okay, play. One walks in, goblin, fire, ah! And then my brother would come and set fire to everything, and it would be ruined. But, you know. <laughs> this is your brother. He That's is. what brothers are for, yeah, setting fire to everything <laughs> ruining it. And we take them with Boy Scouts, and then we go out in the woods and they set fire. <laughs> now, curiosity. Um, growing up in St. Louis, when I did... Um, boy, God, I just sound old. Okay, but we won't mention when yeah, that was. There was. Thank you. You don't go old, David. I know. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> like a day over twelve. Yeah. Uh, anyway, there was no writing community that I was aware of, and definitely not for kids. I know. Um, I'm constantly asked as president of Sales Writers Guild. I don't know if you do it or not. Um, Fedora, but if there's any writing community, any writing groups for kids or places kids can go to do um, mm -hmm. to do writing, St. Louis Writers Guild does have at Writers in the Park one a kids program, but that's once a year. Is there? I'm gotcha. Is there anything you that you've ever gotten asked that, and if you knew anything or? No, people seem to think that uh, Sisters in Crime is all about nuns who've gone bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> uh, Go ahead, Michael. My first picture book 
-hmm. was literally called uh, Cluck and Moo, where a cow was going moo and his friend Bird, who was going cluck, then the floor disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Cluck, which is the bird, came down and swooped and picked up uh, Moo, and they lived happily ever after. I love it. <laughs> well, I joined St. Louis Writers Guild when I was like 15 or 16, because that's Whoa. when I first heard about it. Okay. Um, I don't know of any, I don't know, I haven't searched though, of any writing groups for uh, kids or for, you know, preteens, teenagers specifically. I know the Writers Guild worked for me when I was able to drive. Mm -hmm. um, but I also know that in school I was encouraged to write a lot and so a lot of the writing that I did before I was able to come to the Writers Guild was done primarily in school not necessarily for class but like mm -hmm. for me and my friends we would pass around notebooks that we would all write and then add to the story and then pass it on and add to the story so most of the writing at that age was done with peers that I chose for myself you mm -hmm. know? Well, I think you bring up a very interesting point and one thing that we can all recall is that writers groups, writers communities come in all shapes and sizes, yes. from international ones to national ones like Mystery Writers of America, for example. There are statewide and local ones like Missouri Romance Writers, which is a very big and very powerful group around town. And we have very small groups, right down to critique groups that are just two or three people, perhaps. And if there isn't one out there that works for you, or perhaps it doesn't that work for you, well, heck, start your own like old Kathleen did over there yeah. starting this one. It is possible. You need to do it. And in fact, you need to pitch in in your writer's group, too, and yes. take positions that are important that will get publicity out, that will get the bills paid, that will make things happen and will give great programs to people. So take some responsibility, do it yourself, and pitch in. Um, <coughs> we're talking, when we were talking about um, kids who want to be writers and maybe teens who want to be writers and finding that community, I just wanted to mention even for adults that um, I recommend kind of finding people of different ages to work with. And an example would be last year on a, a critique partner match event on Twitter, um, a teenage girl connected with me and said, asked if I wanted to exchange manuscripts with her. And in my head, I was like, I was being kind of judgmental. I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, whatever. But I decided to trade with her. I write YA. She found so much stuff in my manuscript that I never would have caught because she is the demographic that I'm writing for. Mm -hmm. And it was so helpful for me. And I, I recommend that to anyone. Just look for people outside of, of your circle. Oh, um, well, I have been to evening school. And I have been to day school for mm -hmm. college. And one of the things that I learned, the reason I would keep to evening school for the rest of my life, if I ever go back to school, is in evening school, there are people of all different ages, all different walks of life. And I learned so much more than I did in day school where everyone was my age, my demographic, my kind of opinions a little bit slanted. Mm -hmm. Like um, Hamlet is the example, taking a Shakespeare class. The mother in Hamlet is usually in films portrayed as kind of, you know, a hussy. <laughs> and in the play, that's not written as who she is and when you have a single mother in a class saying I would sacrifice so much to make sure my son was okay and you have someone who's you know in their 60s and their 70s saying you know I think this is true of the father of Ophelia like you get such different perspectives from people of all age groups they see things that you will not see and so yes different ages and community is good Another recommendation for that is the internet. Mm -hmm. There are so many different communities on the internet, you will find your people. They are out there and they are probably online. Facebook, yeah. LinkedIn, Yahoo, Twitter. Groups, you name yeah. uh, Kathleen, I was just about to say the internet, especially for a young person, is actually a good place to find a writing group. Uh, schools are actually, and teachers, even if they don't have one through the school, might be a good resource because they might have answered the question before. But what Kathleen was talking about also with night school, Another difference in night school, in general, not always, night students tend to be local to the community 
whereas day students are more likely to be just going there to go to college and their permanent homes or some other place, or once they graduate, they're gonna be moving some other place. So if you're gonna be forming a permanent writing community that you want for long term, night school is very often the place to look versus day school. Um, well, for school, um, uh, writing communities for like uh, other with other kids are very important because then uh, if you make a mistake, you can ch instead of check if your teacher didn't notice it, you can then ask a f uh, check with your friend. True. That brings up a good point actually about critiquing. One of the things writing communities are good for is having friends and people who you trust to read your work and tell you if there's things that you can make better in it. Um, tell you if you know, you're know you missing some things, like I don't think this character would do that because this character hates dragons, why is he writing one now? Mm -hmm. Or you know, this is really good, you should keep going with this story, I really like it, mm -hmm. I want to know what happens next. Those things both keep you writing and keep you improving. And, you know, having friends who can do that or someone in your community who can do that will keep you writing longer than you would on your own, necessarily. Uh, this is uh, George Soroy. I'm a off, uh, local author here in St. Louis, write uh, science fiction for the young adult reader. Um, sorry, uh, coming in a little bit later than usual, but uh, the follow-up on what uh, Michael was talking about um, regarding school, it's funny that uh, he's actually, he actually has in his possession right now uh, a copy of my novel Excelsior, which started off uh, back in 1985 when I was in fourth grade, and that was actually like around the time when my friends and I, when we would be finished with our assignments, we would just start drawing our own characters that were that were inspired by Star Wars, Transformers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, what he's got right now is the current version of the of those characters. So it's great that you know that he was talking about that because that's exactly where I started. I started in that sort of mold, and then you know con uh, continue to go on from there. On a related note, I just want to tell people not to throw their writing away for at least fifteen years, <laughs> <laughs> because that story you started in the '80s is something that you saved. I'm guessing. Yes. So that, like, I'm guessing, in the 2000s and 2010s, you were able to take that and update it, create it, recreate it as you are now. And I'm guessing if you didn't have the original, you wouldn't have had all the information that you needed. One thing that I, to comment on that is just like, you know, I, you're, you're half right on that in terms of, of that, you know, like I've been able to hold on to the characters. Where those, you know, where those characters and stories were and everything, they've been stuck in my head for so long, where my school assignments, school tests and everything should have been. That's where... <laughs> Uh, that's w that's where uh, that's what wound up taking up residence up there instead. So I've been just kind of I don't have the original stories that I was writing back in like the in the '90s when I really realized that I had something from those from the years of you know like grade school on and everything when I was you know just writing them in spiral notebooks. I don't have those notebooks anymore, and I'm actually glad that I don't because they were pretty awful stories. <laughs> but the characters I knew I had something with. So. Real quick, tying into that, one thing writing communities do is they will bring out the what you've done in the past. I don't know about anyone else here, but Michael, since you kind of kicked us off on the old days, for us anyway, <laughs> <clears throat> my first story I wrote was a vampire story, and that was back in third grade. Mm -hmm. Then vampires reappeared in an adult novel that I have in the drawer right now <laughs> that I need to go back and rewrite completely, but nevertheless, it's an old idea that has constantly come back here. And we'll find out, I've, I've seen in talks in which we've had at St. Louis Writers Guild in times we've sat around the proverbial right pack table, the colleagues would like to call their cupping table. Um, you draw your own conclusion. Yeah, you, yeah, you really can. It's, huh? called, it's called cupping because they demonstrate how to make fine coffee mixtures. We just take it over and it's ours. Yes, um, it's and we're in our cups. And, yes. <laughs> We're in our cups of coffee. Anyway, but what I was going to go with that is all the time we're sitting there, we're talking about things, and you can hear the old story ideas from the past that everyone's written mm -hmm. still coming up and appearing still in our current day stories. Okay. Um, I just want to say that um, there are 
that you have to get an idea somewhere. Um, and usually, um, if you're like having, if you can't figure something out, a writer's community can help with that because they're talking to people and then you can get ideas and go back in your story and then add the ideas into it. Thank you, Akasha. Yes, and, what, and what grade are you in? Um, eight. Oh, you know, seven. Seventh grade? Seventh grade. Yeah. Cool. And That's she already knows the, knows the rules. <laughs> that, what you just said is actually what Jen does a lot for me. I, I'll have a problem with something, and I'm like, I can't fix it. Jen, <laughs> Jen, what am I missing? What's wrong with it? And the best way to solve that problem is for the outside person being me mm -hmm. to just ask questions. What questions yeah. came to my mind? And as the author, who is Kathleen, tries to answer those questions, her mind is thinking in different ways that it wasn't thinking before, and her mind knows what's happening in that world. Mine doesn't. So if I ask a question like, what, you know, where does this guy sleep now that he's on the run? And she thinks about, oh, well, I guess he's going to have to find a place to stay, or he's going to have to camp, or maybe he just falls asleep in a ditch by the side of the road. Mm -hmm. What happens to him then? And perhaps, perhaps that doesn't make it into the book. But it definitely awakens a new part of her brain that wasn't thinking beforehand. Mm -hmm. Jen is the plot doctor. I call her <laughs> when my stories need surgery. <laughs> she fixes them. They're better than when I when then went into the table, and it's great. So should we start calling her Bones? <laughs> Moving Old on. Saw Bones. <laughs> That's me. I think of Dr. McCoy. But anyway. Yes. Doctor. There are lots of really good down-to-earth practical reasons for joining writers' communities. One of the most important, I think, is that you can learn the bones of the business because, after all, every writer is a corporation. You are your own small business. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's you, your body, your writing, and you have to learn the business if you're going to succeed at it. And writers' communities like the Writers Guild, like... Sisters in Crime will help you, like romance writers, all of them will help you to find the ways and means to get things done. I have a little contest for members of Greater St. Louis Sisters in Crime. I call it 4 for 40. People write four pages. I send them to three very experienced judges and they pick whoever's best and whoever's best I actually edit the first 40 pages of their manuscript. What I find and what the judges find and what they complain about so much is that the people who enter this contest really are on the ground floor and they don't have the slightest idea of how to even format it mm -hmm. and so they fuss about the formatting and it's not that hard to find out how to format things by going online, but people simply don't do it. They have this passion for writing something, they want to get it out there, but there is that very practical side you have to think about too, and you have to get the formatting right, and you have to get the details right, and it's the organizations, the communities, which will point you in the right direction. Nope. Um, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Um, in addition to kind of the in-person St. Louis Writers Guild, I'm also a member of this um, online group. Uh, we call ourselves the NAC, New Adult Collaborative. And one thing that's really helped me about that group is um, we're all writers, but we're also all friends. I met a lot of them in person, but they live all over the world. And um, is that we help promote each other's work. And um, since we're all debuts, we've been able to share, like, well, this is what works for me in finding readers. And then there's, like, oh, this didn't work for me. And therefore, we're able to help each other's sales. We do... Um, We've had online parties where I'll bring my friends to the party, they'll bring their friends, and like we expose each other's books to the people through our circles, and then each of our circles in turn grows. So, I mean, I think it's good. Writing communities are good for socializing, but they're also good for sales and building that readership. Well, this is to any teachers um, that listen to this. Uh, don't force your students to uh, do uh, stuff they don't want. Let them express themselves, because um, that oh. usually helps more. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I journal a lot. Um, to that point, I journal a lot, and one of the kindest things my fifth grade teacher ever did was when they assigned journaling, and I didn't want to do it, 
She said, I just need to see that you did it. I promise not to read anything if you don't want me to. Just write, do not read at the top. So I wrote, do not read in caps lock at the top of every page. And I wrote what was on my mind. And it was great. Mm -hmm. I was great for the assignment. I got 100 because it was done. And I found out that writing was a huge outlet for me. And I kept on doing it ever since. So that's to that point. What I was going to say with Fedora is that there's always a writing community or a writing community member who has been where you are and can help you reach the next step in your writing. You learn, you grow from people, and you can grow as a group, or you can get advice from someone who's a little bit ahead of you. If you are just at the stage where you're trying to start writing again, you don't necessarily need help with publishing or with publicity, but there's somebody who's going to be, you know, writing more than you, and they're going to help you. And by the time you're ready for publishing publicity, there's going to be somebody who's done that. And that's one of the beauties of a writing community. There's always someone who can help you grow. And I think writers are very generous with their time mm -hmm. and with their expertise, too. Yeah. Uh, just to play on, um, just to add on to the online community, I'm actually part of a, a group of science fiction and fantasy authors. We call ourselves the Dragon's Rocket Ship. <laughs> and um, it's a really, really great, supportive, um, very warm, generous group of, of people um, that all really kind of support each other's writing. And one of the big things that we used to have in the main page was um, the every now and then, you know, like someone would get it, um, would decide that they want to do a writing sprint. So they would tag a whole bunch of people that normally do, you know, like the sort of sprints, and we would set the clock for a half hour. And um, when at one point, I just I asked the uh, the the, mat, the webmaster of that particular group if they could if we could kind of branch off and kind of start up our own little sister group to that group, to the Dragon's Rocket Ship that was just focusing on sprints. So now all of a sudden we have a whole bunch of different sister groups that are based off of that, and it wouldn't have been a, been possible if it weren't for that original Dragon's Rocket Ship community. I have a question just mm -hmm. for our listeners who may not know: What is a writing sprint? Oh, writing sprint is basically just uh, saying that um, we're coming on the either like the the 15 of the hour, the 30 of the hour, the 45, or the top of the hour. Who would like to do a writing sprint? And basically, what that means is you are just sprinting your writing, you know, just doing as much writing as possible within a half hour block. And then afterwards, once that half hour is over, then you go back and say, I got. Uh, 340 words, and then you go ahead and you know put in a um, a little block of what you've what you've just done, and it's a great way to kind of to get your uh, word count up, and it's also a great way to kind of allow yourself to have your your writing a little bit of your writing out there to the world. Thanks. I think uh, the best years to find out what genre you're best at is school uh, when you're in school. Hmm. Well, I know there's a Julia Cameron exercise in the Right to Write that basically talks about finding out what you like to write. And one of the things that she says that I've noticed is true is there are things that I loved when I was little, for example, fairy tales, for example, fantasy, that I still write today and I still love them. They're, if you look at the things that you love to read, love to watch, the characters you like, you're going to notice patterns. And those are the things that you're probably going to like writing, too. So school age is a good time to figure out what you like writing. But to do that, all you have to do is pay attention to what you like, period. Mm -hmm. You're kind of drawn to what you like. You're kind of drawn to read in your genre, mm -hmm. of whatever it is. I don't care if it's sci-fi, straight fiction, or nonfiction or romance, or whatever. If there's something that draws. Go ahead. and uh, what? Oh, there's a Neil Gaiman short story okay. that he wrote years and years ago that he found in a drawer and finished and the main character in that story is trying to write non he's trying to write basically um, literary fiction but every time he tries it turns into fantasy <laughs> and finally he realizes I need to just write fantasy and he's much happier his stories go better that's your I had Jen and then, oh okay and so Jen you do all right I'll be quick um I wanted to to add to you know find your genre help you know your community helps you find your genre something I've learned about participating in a community is that everyone has you know your whole life goes into your writing 
and you're inspired by everything that happens to you, and no one has had that experience that you had. No one's lived your life exactly as you've lived it, and no one has your collection of likes and dislikes. So write what you like, uh, put all your favorite tropes in it, do all those things that uh, you're almost embarrassed because you like it so much. Someone else out there will enjoy it. No one out there is going to make exactly what you make. So just make yourself happy. Who, someone, I know we've talked about with the last one. I'm going to go to her first or next. But we've talked about Stephen King, the lesson of Stephen King, which actually will follow this episode. I'm going to bump <laughs> this to tomorrow, and that will be after that. Um, we talked about write for yourself first. Um, you, you, can, um, you can write about pretty much anything. So if you pay attention to what you like, you can basically write about it. You can write about like pizza that talks like, uh, <laughs> like this, or like a Pegasus or like horror, or like a, like a ghost mm-hmm. or yeah, any of that stuff. And yeah, that's and <laughs> then, yeah. Right, anything you can imagine, right? Yes, anything you can imagine, you can write about. That's and I wouldn't have thought it. to write about a pizza that talks. Yeah, it's just <laughs> well, it, it talks inside me, I'll tell you. That. Pizza, pizza the Hut. Pizza the Hut. Oh, he does yeah. talk. Space There's in Spaceballs. Spaceballs. That's a movie that did really well. <laughs> you can do well with talking pizzas. Just yes. saying. <laughs> I didn't even know about the, that yeah, there was an the, actual thing. I just, it oh, just yeah. popped yeah. into my mind. There you pizzas. go. Exactly. Yeah. So if you can write it, you can make it work. <laughs> Hi, Lauren Miller, a speculative fiction and game writer. I'm just tying into what Kathleen and Jennifer were saying about, you know, common themes of things that we enjoy writing about. Uh, Holly Lyle is a really good fantasy writer who's done a lot of workshop clinics. I recommend uh, any listeners looking into her. But one of the things that she recommends is exploring things that make you sad or scared or angry or even things that kind of inspire you and make you feel magical and just doing that kind of mind mapping. Um will generate ideas and themes for your writing that you may find emerging again and again. Can you explain more about the mind mapping? Sure. Uh, Mind mapping as a concept is you take a topic and then you just try to uh, think of as much related matter as possible and then you might, you know, branch off those into other things. So it kind of almost looks a little bit like a tree, you know, and you just keep going in different directions. But... Uh, you know, like something that makes you scared. You might start thinking of doors or things hiding under the bed, and then you come up with all these ideas that you may end up working into your fiction or the other types of things that you write. I've always seen that done by starting uh, with these thoughts and connecting them in bubbles on paper, mm-hmm. and, and somehow that gives a graphic form to something that's otherwise uh, linear mm-hmm. as in a written uh, uh, story. Okay, now that uh, Dave told me this is going to be airing tomorrow, is that correct? Yeah, I'll air tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I have to give a plug to uh, Jen's upcoming uh, Writers Guild talk, uh, September 12th. 12th, yes. 12th, yes. and uh, she will be reviewing how to use the free software for uh, Twine, which is a way to do what... Uh, Peter just described online. But <laughs> um, my ri- original talk... Uh, ta- Topic? Bleh. Yeah. Comment. Comment. Yeah, Thank there you. we go. My, uh, it was uh, earlier someone said what you like to read is probably what you like to write. I would like to give the proviso you have to know it exists and mm-hmm. you have to have had access to it. I had a friend in college that really liked YA in college and was like seeing the Harry Potter books and all those and was really missing. Like, where was this stuff? When, well, she said something to the effect of, we didn't have these great books when I was a kid. Why weren't they there then? So I could be reading them when I was in third grade and fourth grade. Ah, uh, but they and did. They mm-hmm. did have them, but she was in a little town in Nebraska, and her local bookstore didn't have them, and this was pre-internet, or just the beginning of the internet. Point is, Amazon didn't exist. Her mm-hmm. parents didn't know they existed. If they had known, they probably would have ordered them for her, but then there's, again, some parents... The library didn't have these books. Mm -hmm. They still don't have the books in a lot of cases. Uh So it's like you have to find what you love before you can know what exists to write about it sometimes. Um, What is it? Uh, Expanding on uh, Sky is the Limit um, and other stuff, if something, uh, if you're trying to write a horror book, if it scares you, then it's 
probably gonna be a good horror book. Yeah. If you're if you're trying to write a happy book and it makes you happy, then it's probably going to be a good happy book. I will say on the, the horror note <laughs> that horror writers can be some of the sweetest, nicest, most down-to-earth people ever, and humor writers can be some of the most jaded people you will ever meet who are completely <laughs> negative. So just know that whatever you're writing, it doesn't necessarily reflect your personality. I think horror writers are getting out all of their inner demons, so they're just sweetness and light when they're done. <laughs> <laughs> So just keep in mind, like, I don't, love you. Go don't ahead. judge a person by what they've written. Case in point, Kathleen. Last mm-hmm. night I saw an interview uh, uh, by uh, of Larry David uh, by Charlie Rose. And uh, Larry David, oh, yes. who's one of the funniest men alive with Curb Your Enthusiasm and all these uh, funny shows on TV, uh, he was so dry, they took him back, Charlie Rose took him back to the apartment he lived in, uh, in New York, a very modest uh, uh, apartment in a, in a building, you know, an apartment building, and, and he looked and he said, yeah, yeah, I remember, and Charlie Rose said, well, doesn't this bring back emotions? He says, not really. <laughs> And I'm telling you, one of the funniest men alive had the most boring interview I ever heard. Well, before the time gets away from us, there is one thing that I think we definitely need to talk about a little bit, and that is networking. And I'm not talking about camaraderie, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing, but I'm talking about professional networking. I don't know that I would have found my new New York publisher had it not been for networking that I did at Malice Domestic last year, which is a convention, a lot like this one, sponsored by a writer's community, where you find other people who have notions that you can tap into and perhaps make a great success from that. Hmm. So networking, professional networking is very important. Um, So... Something Melanie said earlier about not knowing that the genre that her friend wanted to write was out there and something that Michael said earlier about school reminded me of a teacher when I was in fifth grade who gave me all sorts of book recommendations. They weren't all in the school on the school bookshelves to begin with, but she gave me things that she knew me well enough. She's like, you will love this. You will love this. And after her, in high school and in college, I had teachers that were saying, you should go toward this direction, you should publish this, you should look into this. And so teachers are a great resource, not just for finding what you love, but for networking. I have teachers that have tried to um, get me in touch with people for work and for writing work. And so teachers are great. Mm -hmm. Just look to people who are doing something along the vein that you want to be doing or who are knowledgeable in the area that you are looking to get into. Writers, as Fedora said, are very generous. They will help you. They will help you if they can. Okay. Built-in networking people. <laughs> Built-in. D- did you want to say something, David? I am going to say uh, something. No, wait, no, wait, no. Uh, oh, but what? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but are you sure you want to talk no, now? I don't, no, 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 no. no, 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 no children. No. Moving on, before I... Turn, <laughs> visual yeah. pranks don't work too well on the radio. <laughs> yeah, it's sadly, no. We <laughs> oh, had fun. <laughs> I was going to say, Roy, something really fun, moving quickly, and that is <clears throat> if you're writing full-time as a writer or you're working full-time as a writer or if you're doing it as a part-time, it's amazing how many people mm-hmm. ask you outside the writing community, well, why can't you build a build this for your kid's um, classroom? Why can't you do that? It's like we're busy writing. But <laughs> when a writer comes to a writer to ask for help, it's like, oh, yeah, please. We, I have no problem helping you at all. <laughs> Go ahead and you. you. Um, I always liked horror that and again, going back to what um, she said to her, what Kathleen? Exactly. Kathleen. Uh, I um, I'm not a scary person. I <laughs> <laughs> I uh, a lot of people. I, if I told them that I liked horror, I, I don't know if they would like um, believe you. Yeah. <laughs> it's it and these yeah. It's just I'm so. It, it's okay. I'm so. Uh, if I'm not on my meds, I'm pretty hyper. <laughs> yeah, because I have ADHD and stuff. 
and get distracted easily. Can I describe Akasha for a minute? Yeah. She's wearing the most adorable pink like My Little Pony shirt. That's she only because my hair. mom. That's only because my mom wanted to wear <laughs> <to> it. <laughs> <laughs> like my pony. The pony on the front is the hyper awesome one that is amazing. Pinkie Pie, right? Yes. Pie? She's the yes. hyper one. So... I wouldn't expect her to like horror, <laughs> but there but you go. Does. You can't judge a writer by what they're wearing. We all love things that you will never guess about us if you look at us. <laughs> hey, this. I'm going to have George talk, and then I'm going to say something real fast. It kind of ties in hilariously right there, but go ahead. Uh, just to kind of play into what, uh, what Fedora was talking about before, the... Um, I, you know, like I spent 17 years in the New York, New Jersey area before I before I made the move to St. Louis. And as wonderful as as New York is, and everything, and it will always hold the place near and dear in my heart. Um, it's also very intimidating, and it's also very overwhelming in terms of the options that are out there. To the point where I wasn't really, I decided not to really focus on trying to get my work out into the hands of the big five and just decided to self-publish originally. And um, when I came here, uh, when I moved here in 2011, and then um, uh, Excelsior wound up getting picked up for re-release through Rocking Horse Publishing here in St. Louis, I, wouldn't, I would not have known the extent of the writing community that St. Louis has if, that, if I didn't make that initial step to reach out to Rocking Horse Publishing. Because now all of a sudden, it just feels like there's so much more open to me. I've done so much more networking with authors that I never thought possible. I've already judged two competitions for the All Right Now uh, Writers Conference in Cape Girardeau. Like so much of, of what's going on. This is my second time here at, at Writers in the Park. And all of this, I'm sure that you know, like similar things were available up in New York City. But it gets so overwhelmed by the big five up there that you just couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. Here it just feels like you know, it's a much more of a family community. And it's something I'm very, very grateful for. Yeah, uh, it's very open, uh, which you don't probably sense in the bustle of New York. Um, to to uh, emphasize what Fedora said and Kathleen amplified, uh, reaching beyond our local community, which, as we said, is very rich uh, for writers, uh, the regional uh, writing conference is a huge tool. This is a mini one. Uh, it's only one day, and it's uh, got a lot of local people involved, uh, although there are a few from far away. Uh, we uh, uh, Networking there is particularly important, because that's where you meet agents, editors, uh, get national... Uh, nationally famous writers to talk to you and give you advice and run workshops and so on. Uh, so that kind of networking even broadens the writing community. So we've come full circle from the local all the way to the national and and hopefully once you're networking in those circles uh, you'll get noticed and uh, more people will, will uh, be interested in what you write, buy your books and uh, uh, more publishers will hear about you. I'd like to point out that something George said is really important. He said, I just had to reach out and take that first step. Take that first step to reach out. And that's extremely important. It can be daunting because, as in New York, it's really overwhelming up there. There's a lot going on. And here in St. Louis, it can seem like, well, they're nice, but who do I find? How do I find anyone? So searching online for writing communities, searching Meetup for writing communities, searching Facebook for writing communities, those are all good things. And asking your friends, because the whole six degrees of separation thing, you know people who know people who are in writing communities. Mm -hmm. There is not a, I have no doubts about that. So just be brave, take that first step. Most writers are really nice and would love to help you and would love to connect with you. That's why I said built-in networking when um, I believe David or Fedora said something earlier, because we love to help other writers. Networking is part of what we do to be social. Like, oh, you wanna, you're getting, trying to get this published? I have an agent, you should, you should think about using them. And I know um, with the group that meets um, for Write Pack every week to write, there is a lot of, oh, 
I found this agent who's looking for the kind of stories that you're writing. I'm just going to email this to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to email you this one. I found another agent that might be what you're looking for. So writers will help you whether you want them to or not. You just have to find them. You just have to find them. I think uh, the best people to help revise and edit are either family members or friends. Mm -hmm. And another thing, I think the poltergeist is getting mad. <laughs> yes, it's been getting louder and louder. Yeah, it's it's been louder. So who's writing a story about the poltergeist? <laughs> I'm writing a story about a poltergeist. Okay, it's oh, all your fault. Oh my gosh, that's right. <laughs> I'll put him in. We'll call him the, the writers in the park. Table thumper? The table thumper. <laughs> I like that, yeah. <laughs> so... I'm trying to think of where yeah, to go next. Who's next? Who's next? To... Well, go for let's it. just take a look at the big picture. And the big picture is really big because there are lots and lots of communities out there for writers, from tiny ones to big ones. And if you can't find one, it's only because you're not looking. Or it's not looking in the right spot. Absolutely. And sometimes a writer's community is just two or three people that you know that all want to write together. Right. And, and it to does be a big universal thing. It does not have to be local either because today things communication is so easy through email and Skype that there's uh, and and I've had people in I've made friends with people in England, France, uh -huh. uh, New Zealand who've been interested in my books. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's worldwide now and and it's easy to do that. And we Skype at Sisters in Crime, we have members that are in Virginia and Fayette, Missouri, and in Denver. So Fabulous. Those are more formal writing communities. I'd like to point out the internet again. I There are thriving fandom communities, people who are all fans of the same thing. And I have many friends from who started out in fandom with me. And we all loved writing the same things, and now a bunch of them are published. A bunch of us are published, actually. I need to include myself there. Yes, you should. And um, a few of them started a small press that is publishing things and doing really well now. Like, it all starts because you get together with people. You'll If you find people who like what you like, you're probably going to find writers in that group who like what you like, who like to write, too. So just look for, look for people who are doing things you like and who you want to be a little bit more like sometimes. Make friends. Yes. <laughs> Writing itself is solitary because of what you do. It's in your head and then it's on the page. But the life of a writer does better when it's not so solitary. Mm -hmm. True. And that's so self-destructive because then you're no longer solitary. There's people who care about you. Well, too much isolation will make you go crazy. They found yes. that out in prisons. <laughs> and on that I, th note, I, thought that, I thought that was my office. Okay. And on that note... <laughs> on that note, join a writing community. Yes. Don't go insane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can <laughs> find Several, them. yes. That does one. So tune in next time, guys, for the next event. So our next adventure for Write Pack is going to be talking about the 22 rules of writing... Our lessons of on writing from Stephen King. And thanks to our audience. And I want to thank our audience. studio's audience Hooray! for some Thanks, great participation. <laughs> Tune in next week and have a great week writing. Thank you. Write Pack Radio would like to thank this live studio audience for its participation in the recording of this episode. It was more than honored to be part of St. Louis Writers Guild's sixth annual Writers in the Park in St. Louis. This is a free writer's conference given by St. Louis Writers Guild. For more information about this year's event or the up, any upcoming events by St. Louis Writers Guild, as well as what will be the 7th annual Writers in the Park, please check www.stlwritersguild.org or join them on Facebook at S A I N T space Lewis Writers Guild on Facebook. The new theme songs for Right Pack Radio were written and performed by Meredith Tate. All copyrights remain with her.